I've been asked to share with you my thoughts on how well-considered media can enhance and improve the student learning experience. I've been working in digital higher education for over 10 years now as media producer, trainer, advisor and consultant and over that time, and especially the last couple of years, the importance of learning and teaching via the medium of digital media has become paramount. Videos, podcasts, screencasts, online interactions and remote lectures, both live and pre-recorded. These have been the recent landscape of higher education and how students interact with their courses and will continue to figure prominently. Media enhanced learning is now no longer a choice, it's an integral part of the offering. So how do we ensure that we do this well? The design and production of high quality digital teaching resources needs to follow a clear process and I've designed and delivered many workshops and courses to teach exactly this. My Building Effective Screencast course for JISC covered all elements of both pedagogical and technical considerations and workflows for creating digital learning resources and was delivered to hundreds of educators from across the HE sector. Careful planning and working to a process is not about constraining the presenter, but rather focusing them on creating concise, clear learning narratives and reflecting closely on what they want to say before pressing record. In almost all cases, this saves time and greatly improves the quality and professionalism of results. For example, when working on a MOOC with a very experienced and eloquent lecturer, his stated plan was that I'll just talk and then you edit it together later. While this was the way he'd worked with TV interviews, in a teaching context, I instead encouraged Patrick to consider his key messages, write a script outline and then present with an auto cue to help build a consistent narrative flow. This process, while requiring more preparation than diving and then reassembling later, allowed him to record the videos in only one or two takes, cover all key points and focus the viewer's attention on him and what he was saying, rather than them being distracted by continuous cuts, edits and transitions. I've used these techniques extensively, and I've developed a simple workflow and a lightweight portable system to enable location recording with minimal production time and post-production needs while delivering engaging, well-structured content quickly and to a professional standard. Most educators are already very adept at session planning and have resources that can be very effectively edited and reframed as excellent digital assets. Digital resources also lend themselves well to being divided up, with thoughts given to self-paced learning and allowing students more control and flexibility. The opportunities to pause and reflect and to repeat as required are key benefits and we can build these into our resources at the design stage. In this way we can communicate core knowledge which can be paced by individual students to suit their own learning style and allow in-person sessions to concentrate on understanding, inquiry and interaction rather than simple knowledge transfer. In the same way as a well-written book or paper is an essential reference, well-designed media deliver what students need to know consistently and repeatably on demand. In the words of a professor of advanced molecular physics and crystallography, with whom I worked at the University of Bristol in 2009, who produced narrated screen capture videos of solutions to complex quantum mechanics equations, this stuff is really difficult. I don't expect them to understand it the first time. A workflow which I designed in 2011 set out a step-by-step -step process and checklist for planning me digital media projects and what we need to consider during the design and production processes. This graphic is tailored to screencasting, but it's equally applicable to other media. Paying attention at the project design stage to all of these elements, rather than trying to fix it in post, pays massive dividends for the production process, as I told Patrick, if you recall. There can also be merit in the if you build it, they will come approach, where the subject matter takes the lead as a standalone resource. As an example, six years ago I was asked to prepare an exemplar multimedia document about the Ansoft matrix, a business development tool that your business school lecturers will no doubt know. And I also chose to make a video version, a narrated PowerPoint. Afterwards, I left the video up on my YouTube channel and forgot about it, until a couple of years later when I noticed a sudden spike in subscribers to the channel. On further investigation, the international business student community had found this video ahead of exam season and adopted it as a favourite revision resource. As of this week, it has more than 216,000 views. Of all the content I've produced over the years, this little video, possibly and unexpectedly, has the widest reach, and its success, as with all the others, rests on my three core design principles. 
clear, clean, focused content, good audio and video quality. My background in professional audio makes me a bit of a stickler for this. And keep it short and sweet with no rambling. Razor sharp and engaging explanation, superb, is my favourite user comment. Though I'm also fond of, thank you, awesome, you are the best. It has found its own context. Copy this address to read more or Google the Ansoft matrix. It's one of the top hits. Another aspect of digital media that can be of great importance to the student experience is that of students as co-creators and collaborators developing digital skills as well as deepening engagement with and involvement in their learning. In our age of YouTube, Instagram and TikTok, young people can be confident and creative presenters, designers, editors and producers of video and audio content, a potentially engaging and empowering experience. With some appropriate guidance, this can become an exciting part of their learning as well as a very useful life skill especially entering the modern job market. Producing digital content to demonstrate their learning is an exciting challenge. For example, when I worked at the University of Bath, the head of Department of Health, Dr Polly McWigan, got in touch and asked me to collaborate on a module in one of her courses about risk, where we proposed that student groups produce short health and safety videos in a narrated PowerPoint format. Polly had seen my MOOC videos and felt that I could give her and her students expert guidance. Using a combination of a co-presented lecture which Polly and I gave to the course cohort, an exemplar video which Polly made with my guidance where she addressed the catalogue of unfortunate health and safety violations by Mr Bump of the Mr Men, and a written guide developed by me and my colleague Keith Brown, we gave them, we gave them everything they needed to produce some excellent resources of their own, develop their digital skills and to engage creatively with their course materials a challenge they enjoyed and took on enthusiastically, producing some great work. Their feedback on the module has been brilliant, and Polly tells me that, in the last year, more and more units have chosen to use recorded presentations, such as the one we designed, as a means of assessment for learning. And for once, I feel that as though we were ahead of the game. As a connected strand here, Allowing students to reflect on their own learning in interviews and Vox Pop videos can similarly encourage them to think about how they learn most effectively and to give feedback on their course. Well-considered media can enhance both sides of the learning and teaching conversation. Well-designed media can additionally enhance the student experience by providing accessibility features such as captions and visualisations, as well as support for dyslexic and ADHD students whose needs are now being better recognised. Having struggled myself at university with traditional regimen of lectures and seminars, accompanied by large tracts of quite dry text, I would have welcomed the alternative and asynchronous formats that digital education could provide, which is probably why I've chosen it as a career. Chop up an hour lecture into short sections, and students may choose to work through them in an order you may not have considered, but which is intuitive to them, or to break them up in, over the course of an evening interspersed with reflection, cups of coffee, conversations or video game breaks to allow them time to process. As a final thought on how digital media can enhance the student experience, we can consider more strategic and whole course aspects of departmental or SLT communication to effectively document and convey the big picture in a human and authentic way. I worked with Bath's Pro VC for Learning and Teaching, Professor Peter Lambert, and several diverse Vanguard programmes, making videos to explain their major university-wide curriculum transformation project. Students seemed reassured that there were familiar faces and voices to attach to these overarching and radical pedagogical changes. To conclude, a key element of student satisfaction is providing students with feelings of security, empowerment and confidence in their learning and digital resources can help with all of these, as I hope I've illustrated. Students are entitled to expect value for their tuition fees, including appropriate media resources to provide high-quality remote or asynchronous teaching when required, as well as complete support and revision materials. These resources are now key expectation when choosing a course. In addition to these pragmatic benefits, digital technologies now offer students ways to creatively and meaningfully extend their learning experience and to express it in ways that reflect their own experiences, priorities and strengths. 
I've long been an advocate and champion of digital education, and while the current urgent focus on it is motivated primarily by unfortunate circumstances, I'm heartened to see it finding wider acceptance and beginning to fulfil the potential for improving the experiences of both students and teachers in higher education that it has long promised. Thank you.